So most of you know me as Ms. Jen, but I am Jennifer Benke. I'm the music director here at Sacred Heart Church, and we're up at the top of the choir loft stairs, which is a really cool space. Someday I hope to bring you up here, and I would love to show you in person, but this year, because things are a little different, we're doing everything virtually. So I'm here at the top of the stairs, and I want to invite you into our choir loft. Come along. We're walking through the organ cabinet. It's a very short, don't, if you're tall, you gotta duck. And I wanna show you our beautiful view that not many people get to see in the church. Isn't our sanctuary just so beautiful? Some of the things we talk about with music in the church and especially, but also the artwork and the stained glass is all about creating a space and, and a time and things that are significant and worthy of the worship of God. When we're here in the church, it doesn't look like our living rooms at home. Even if our, our home, our little home church has a crucifix or a statue of the Blessed Mother or some saints that are important to your family, it looks different coming into the church and that's okay because this space, this space is created for the worship of God and not ourselves. So what does that mean? We have beauty, we're surrounded by big symbols and signs that give us a little bit more of a sense of who we are in respect toward the almighty God, right? So in terms of the music, um, why do we sing in church? Why is it important to sing in church? Well, you have to go back in your mind and think about the early church, the early church, the disciples in the desert, when they were evangelizing outside or whether they had to hide in the catacombs and celebrate mass over the, over the relics, over the, the saints of the, their time, they had to make sure without microphones that the word of God spread to the people as far as it could go. So if you're outside or you're in a big space and you can't use a microphone, let's just do a test. If I say the word Alleluia to you, it's at a certain volume, right? But if I use my same breath and I sing the word Alleluia, Alleluia, you can hear it bounce all the way from this side of the church, all the way down to the altar and all the way back. And our church is built for the acoustics to spread the word of God to all of the people, regardless of whether we use microphones. We're very blessed to be in this church. We have a barrel vaulted ceiling, which is in the shape of half a barrel, right? So it helps the sound travel down. And it also, from the pulpit, travels all the sound up. The reason we use microphones now is because of clarity. Sometimes we lose the consonants and the diction of our voices gets lost. So for people to really understand, we use that microphone just as a, as a reinforcement of the clarity because the word of God is the most important thing here. So you can hear that when I sing versus when I speak, I use the same breath and the word of God travels further. So, we're thinking about the early church in, in the ancient times, and we think about the music came from our Jewish forefathers. They were chanting, they have ancient chants that go back to through the Old Testaments. Miriam, the sister of Moses, sang at the, at, after they reached the other side of the Red Sea, and all of Pharaoh's chariots and charioteers got washed away in the Red Sea. They sang and they danced. And there's a special song in the Jewish tradition that's just for that. And there's always talk in the Gospels of uh, Jesus and his disciples at the Last Supper. What's the last thing they do at the end of the Passover meal? They sing the songs and then they go to the Garden of Gethsemane. So singing has been an intrinsic part of our religion from the beginning. And it's also because it makes us feel good, right? When you listen to the radio, when you hear music that you like to listen to, it makes you feel good. And it, it draws a community together. It draws prayers together. 
St. Augustine is credited with um, a quote that um, singing uh, belongs to he who loves. Singing belongs to those who love. So we sing together and we join our voices in a community. And that's what, what singing in the church is about. Now, I already talked about how singing helps the sound go out, right? But I also said that music is one of the ways that we worship God in the world. So in this space, we have a different type of music than what you listen to on the radio or what you listen to at home because our music here is not about the performer or how it makes us as individuals necessarily feel. Our emotions don't matter so much as the praise and the worship of God matters here in the church. And so that's why quality in terms of the artwork, in terms of the woodwork, in terms of the stained glass, they're all very important. And so is the quality of the music that we perform during the liturgy. Because the liturgy, the Mass, the Eucharist, Thanksgiving, is all about the source and summit of our life. That means it's the most important part of every Christian's life is to come to Mass and to participate in the liturgy, the work of the people, and worship God. And it's right there in our Eucharistic prayer. When Father says, um, we say, it is right and just, and the priest says it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you praise and glory through Jesus Christ, right? So it's always, it's not just right and just, it's our duty as humans to give it to God and it's our salvation. That's where salvation comes from, to always and everywhere give praise and thanksgiving to God. So what do we have here in terms of the music? Well, sometimes we have a choir, but in these times, it's a little different. Right now, we usually have a cantor and the organ. So when I sing a funeral or Mr. Kevin sings, we're up here just solo and we use the microphone for clarity, especially for the live stream. The live stream is happening. You may recognize this view because the live stream equipment just went in in July to get us up and on the web. And we just got our brand new camera, which is 4G and 1080p and all these fancy terms. We just got our brand new camera just two weeks ago. It was on back order since the pandemic. So um, this is where the singing happens, okay? And the microphone is used for clarity. And then we have the organ itself. Now, is this the organ? Is this the organ, do you think? Usually most kids say, yeah, that's the organ. What else would it be, Miss, Miss Jen? This is actually only part of the organ. This is called the console, and it's where the keys are. So if you're thinking about a piano, a whole piano, the part that you interact with is the keys. You press down, right? And the string gets a hammer, hits on a piano. Maybe you've seen inside of a piano. The hammer hits the piano, it's a string instrument. Well, the organ is a similar action. You press down on a key, but, air goes through a pipe and as long as you hold down that key the sound doesn't stop it doesn't stop until you lift your finger off the key okay so why is that important well in the beginning of church music it was just a cappella singers and a cappella that sound you might have heard in some TV shows or you might know that like you like a specific a cappella group um, they, that means that it actually comes from the Italian, from a in cappella, the chapel or the church. It actually comes from the idea that the way that the church sang was a uh, acceptable way of making music. And so all music that is like they do in the church is considered a cappella. Okay, so. Um, we do a lot of a cappella music here, just the children's choir, the adult choir as well, but sometimes we use an accompanying instrument. In about 1,000, somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200, the church was expanding all the way across Europe, 
and Northern Africa and into the Middle East. It was just expanding out. And there were more people who were becoming Christians than the amount of people who knew how to sing the music. So the church decided that instead of having to send four smart singers to every little individual church, they could send one musician who could read when we developed music, um, the way to notate it, we developed it to teach kids and new Christians how to sing music they'd never heard before. So the Catholic Church is responsible for all of Western music. And um, because of that, they eventually realized that in all these little churches, they needed to have all of the music, harmony and the melody played. So they allowed an accompanying instrument. Now they chose the organ because like I said before, you push down on a key and your, the air goes through the pipe and it makes the sound. And it's just like when we press down on our diaphragm and a sound comes out, it's until you can hold it, right? It's the same thing. So the organ was allowed because it was the closest thing to a human voice, okay? So now I'm gonna go behind the console and turn on the organ and you're gonna hear a click which is the blower. It turns on, it's down all the way in the basement of the church, they call it the crypt. It's down in the basement of the church and it's got vents that come out from underneath and it sucks in air from outside and it blows it up into a big machine back here and it pushes it and then the pipes that open are correspond to the keys I press on the organ. So listen. You hear the air come on too? Maybe, maybe you heard it, maybe you didn't, I don't know. So, you sit down on the organ, and Miss, everybody knows Miss Jen is not an organist. I'm barely a pianist. So, I open, I turn on one of the stops here. I'm going to press, let's see, here. Number one, let's see what happens. Right? So that sounds like it is the, the reeds, I think. Actually, that one is called the voice celeste, voix celeste, okay? That is the uh, celestial voice. So I can sing, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do. So it's a very similar sound on the organ that you get to a human voice, okay? So for many, many years, many years, like hundreds of years, the organ was the only acceptable instrument in the Catholic Church. And then in the last 150 years or so, or so we've been allowed to use an, a piano, and then more recently, because of the influence of dif diverse communities of, of, uh, around the world, we've, in the American church, we've also allowed guitars and that. So you'll hear different instruments depending on which type of ensemble is the best ensemble available at all the individual Catholic churches. Even though we are the universal church, sometimes the musical expression happens in different ways because we have a traditional sanctuary and a traditional instrument. This is the best type of music for Sacred Heart Church, so an organ or a piano and a cappella voice because we have the luxury of a beautiful acoustic. But sometimes you have to pick a music that fits your acoustic better. Sometimes there's a contemporary style church with lots of carpeting and you need more microphones and guitars and more instruments. But in this space, with this type of a sanctuary, this is the type of music that rolls out into the people as closely as and, and allows for uh, congregational participation. And that's really very important because the liturgy, the word liturgy, means the work of the people. So when you go to Mass, regardless of whether or not you think you have a pretty voice or you like listening to yourself, or your, you know, your brother or sister says, oh gosh, don't sing, you're terrible, right? You, it doesn't matter. Your best 
is what God wants. And that's when we say our duty and our salvation, okay? It's all an important part of giving a sacrifice of praise. Sometimes Miss Jen doesn't like the way she sounds in the morning, but I still have to sacrifice my ego and my own thoughts about how I feel about myself and give it up to God. I'm giving you the best I have today. Sometimes I have a sore throat, but that's the best I can give, you know? And so whatever you can bring, whatever gifts you bring to the church, that's what God wants from you. He doesn't expect you to bring more than he's given you. So you bring those gifts and you sing loud and you sing strong because Miss Jen needs you to sing. One of the last things I wanted to say is, like I said, this is a beautiful, beautiful view of the church. And especially when there's mass here, I love to see the backs of everybody because I see everybody's reverent posture. I see how humble they are before our Lord Jesus Christ. And another favorite thing that I get to do sometimes, not in the pandemic, is sit in the canter chair because I can sit and look at all of your beautiful faces and, and the love that you bring to the table when we all worship together and we all come together as one community to join at the table of Christ. And that's really, um, as a minister in the church, that fills me up, that helps my spiritual life to grow because I see how much love is in the community for our Lord Jesus Christ. And it, 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 it's a wellspring of my own soul. And I know it has nothing to do with me and all to do with your relationship with God, but I get to see a little part of it and that's really cool. So I thank you so much. I know this is a, a different year and I know that singing is kind of one of those uh, activities that may not be the safest right now. So you'll bear with us for the rest of the year. But once this pandemic is over, I would love to see you or your parents involved in the music ministry here at Sacred Heart Church. Thank you and God bless.